internet. My name is Hazel from Hazelnutty Games, and good morning, good afternoon, hello, good night, welcome to Monday. We are finishing off Monster Loves You. I have enough monster loving left in me for one more episode of this, so if this is not near the end, then I am speed running this. Alright, rock. Nash Nash Gobclaws are eating on a tattered red blanket eating cookies and talking about artifacts. What are those? Uh, they're human-made objects. Many monsters collect them, so basically area little mermaid stuff going on there. All right, sounds good. Um, let's continue the discussion. Uh, Gob Claus really wants a nice big collection, but he can never find any good ones. Let's, let's glance at Nash Nash. I wonder... If, I mean, that's, that's a good birthday idea right there. He runs a claw along the handlebars of her little scooter. You both know some good spots? Um, well, I mean, we could tell him about the good spots. It's not like we're going to give him the scooter. Let's do that. We open her mouth, but gasp as Nosh Nash kiss, kicks- What? What? Why did he kick me? Why did he kick me? That'll be less stuff for us. I don't care if you have less stuff, but if I- Oh. Oh, Nash Nash was not the one I was telling about the awesome spot. He was the other one with an awesome spot. Uh, she does not want to share her big stuff with, uh, Gob Claws, bitch. <laughs> she pokes me with her claws to make her point. Um, I can keep the secret or I can tell anyways. Um, I'm telling anyways, because she's not nice. Uh, get some honesty and kindness points. Good, could use some of those. Gob Claus will clicks her pincers. <laughs> she does a little dance of thanks. She scuttles off into the woods to check out the places you described. I wish, instead of saying it, everybody did dances of thanks. That would make things much better. Especially if they were like, pincer clicky dances of thanks. What about Nash Nash? Uh, she makes good on her promise of big trouble in the form of a thorough drubbing. Um, I don't know what a drubbing is, but apparently I'm bleeding, so that's upsetting. <laughs> Alright. So, um, explore the whale mist a little bit more. We have six days left. Let's see what this is all about. You and Gobclaws come across an ant and a grasshopper, both locked in mortal combat. Uh, each is biting the other's back leg. Let's get involved in this buggy battle. Uh, Gobclaws holds me back. Isn't there a legend about bugs and wheat? Maybe we should be careful. Um, wheat? Am I weedy? Wheaty? Uh, silly gobclaws, I'm not afraid of bugs when I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I got some bravery points for disregarding the wheat legend. Um, I could separate the ant and the grasshopper and then eat them. Oh, they're fighting over wheat. Or I could divide the wheat between them. Um, let's eat them, because I'm, I'm hungry, apparently. Uh, not much meat, you mutter, and use the wheat stock to scratch an itch. Gobclaw sighs and agrees, and you both move on. I got some respect. Um, and no allergen effects due to the wheat and bugs, so she'd be crazy. She cried. Uh, let's see, mutton leg. As you explore the whale mist, you notice the air smells faintly of gingery bread. Wow. <laughs> Seriously, is there gonna be a gingerbread house out here? There, ahead of the flood, a very fat bird's pecking a trail of crumbs that winds through the trees. Uh, following that, if it's a gingerbread house, it, it looks like it is. It leads along twisting paths you never knew existed. Deep in the forest, you come across a rickety human house, which smells of baked goods, and you hear two children are babbling nearby. Um, let's wait for the, them to leave the baked house so I can get some gingerbread. I'm not going to eat them because I'm not... I mean, I guess I am a monster, but... Smoke begins to pour from the windows of the house. The children flee deeper into the forest, laughing. As flames rise to engulf the whole house, you hear an adult human screaming inside. I feel like this plan has gone terribly wrong. Um, I guess that's the end of that. <laughs> Let's politic with monsters a little bit more. There's a little snake guy here. Snake moon is right. The snake moon is rising in the sky. It's time to gather snakes for the ritual. I'm not even going to ask. Uh, let's get some snakes. You wander the fields near the whale mist. It's easy to catch snakes, but every time you reach for another one, some of them squirm out of your grass. Most of them are getting away. Um, I can kill them as I catch them or keep catching them alive. I feel like the snake moon would be real gross if it's just a bunch of dead snakes, so let's try and keep doing it alive. Everyone claps when you arrive with three living snakes hanging from you by their fangs. Got some respect, honesty, and cleverness. The venom hardly stings at all. <laughs> snakes are added to the cauldron along with a mass of other snakes, some writhing and others lying still. Now, oh, I guess I could have cheated. Let's join the circle and begin the ritual, and I guess that's it. Uh, Alright. Let's explore again, one more time. Foot! You and Nash Nash encounter the Proud Bear. This is an honor and a problem. <laughs> okay. The Proud Bear has killed monsters, something rare in the animal kingdom. He stares at you. Um, alright. Good day to you, bear. I'm not gonna fight you, because you, you sound bad. 
don't fight bears. Bear doesn't move, we go back to the way we came. I suppose I could have won some bravery or something there, but oh well. <laughs> I feel like I've got good points. Spider. Today's the day of the Spinner 500, the big spider race. Winners are highly all around the town. All right. Racing spiders, why not? My spider hurt her leg this morning. What do I do? What do I do? Um, I could cheat. Enter her with a broken leg. No, me and my spider could watch. We could cuddle up with some popcorn and it's okay. With a tear and a smile, you and your spider watch from the stands. The spider sucks the butter out of a piece of popcorn. Ah, uh, they remember my popcorn and gives you four tiny thumbs up at once. Aw, oh, I can't, I, I don't have spider legs to do that, so we're just gonna have to deal. Well, that's okay. Got some respect, she rubs her healing leg and says, Next tier, so you're if a bird doesn't eat me. This game is so weird. <laughs> Two days left, more politicking. Mutton leg again. God Claus and you are arguing about what to have for lunch. She got to pick last time. This never happens in real life, by the way. I'm pretty much down for whatever. Um, so long as it doesn't have to have meat in it. Suddenly, your favorite food flies down from the sky and perches within arm's reach. The magpie chirps. Have either of you seen a cornfield around here? Uh, your stomach growls. I could help the bird. I could run away from the talking bird. Or I could eat the bird. I'm hungry. I'm eating the bird. Uh, lost some stuff. Fantastic amuse-bouche. Sadly, it wasn't much. And we still have to figure out what to have for lunch. So that was probably a mistake. Uh, but it was tasty, right? Uh, what does this do? Gobclaws shows off a human doll she found in the last hunt. A crowd of elders and other monsters gather around you, chattering excitedly. Oh, Barbie. She asks if you think it might be good to show the doll to some of the monsterlings. Let them see what a human-shaped thing without actually seeing a real human, you know? Educational. Um, they're going to get some weird ideas about what people look like, but sure. Absolutely. Gobclaws can see that you're bringing some science. She hangs on to your words. Uh, they should know what a human looks like so they don't freeze the first time they see a real one. They're not so cuddly and cute. Gobclaws nods. Good point. We want the young ones to avoid humans, but not be so frightened that they do anything foolish. That's probably for the best. Uh, respect, cleverness, all around making up for the bird incident real fast here. You're wiser than me, Gobclaws says. The rest of the monsters nod half-heartedly. But you can tell they appreciate your insight. It's because I've got so much wisdom here. How come wisdom's not a stat? Well, no days left. You're growing old, my friend. Your body is very soft and you drip slime everywhere you go. It's getting hard to leave your hovel. Uh, I could go see the spine doctor, stay inside and think about it, or embrace my fate. Got a couple of bravery points for being okay with being old. I mean, when you have oven mitts as part of your body, you're gonna age pretty well. A group of elders is waiting at the door of your hovel. They've seen your drippings. They know it's time for you to dissolve or ascend. Um, so I can either ascend to become an elder if I've done well enough, or I dissolve and apparently become a puddle of goo. I could refuse to go or ask them to come back later. Uh, let's go. Let's just do it. The Elder of Omen. The Elders of Omen surround you at the spawning vat. Weeks have built up to this moment. <laughs> They've built a fire beneath a small cauldron. Your body is squishy and damp. Um, uh, I can try to ascend to Elder. I can give up and dissolve. I can flee to the wilderness. Let's examine the cauldron a little bit. The rusty iron cauldron smells like electrical fluid and herbs from the whale mist. What does electrical fluid smell like, I wonder? It's empty now, but it will soon hold blood and slime from many monsters. Look at how sad that guy looks. <laughs> All right. Let's try to ascend. I can do it. A masked elder comes forward. She says it's time to decide. All the elders growl and snarl. This music, by the way, is awesome. <laughs> this is the best monster ascending ever. Or dissolving, we don't know. The masked elder claws herself. Three drops of liquid spatter against the hot bottom of the empty cauldron. Thick vapor rises into the air. Let's listen to it. The masked elder asks, Who has already decided the fate of this monster? A few of the elders approach the cauldron to add fluid to the collection. The liquid begins to bubble. The masked elder has placed five flat stones on the ground before you. She says, Choose one. Chance will glide, guide your claw. Uh, let's look at them. Each stone is stained with old blood and polished by the touch of many a paw. You can't tell one from the other, so let's just grab one that looks good. As you reach for the stone, someone shrieks in the distance. All eyes turn in that direction. You realize you can peek under the stones if you're quick. Um, I can use my honesty to try and cheat. I don't remember how much I have and it doesn't show me here, so uh, 
I'm just gonna not. You wait a moment and the shrieking dies away. All the elders turn back to watch you. Let's choose the next stone. The other side of the stone is etched with a crude glyph. It shows a monster holding one claw up, speaking intently. The masked elder says, Ah, honesty, but you have just passed that test. Alright. It's probably good that I didn't try and cheat. Let's choose the next one. The other side of the stone is etched with a crude glyph. It shows a monster face dead, a human. The masked elder says, We will test your bravery. Let's be tested. Elders add sticks and dry leaves to the fire until it grows huge and hot. Uh, they remove the cauldron and retreat before the roaring flames one by one until only you remain. If I dance through it, there's a 50% chance that I'll die, or I could try to stay near the fire. I had some bravery. I'm going to try and stay near it. Dice roll! It's hot! Very hot, and your body begins to pull away on its own. You gather your will and remain in place. Your excess slime begins to dry out and crack. But as the fire dies down, you are still here. Awesome. Doing good. Several monsters howl their approval and step forward, adding more fluids to the iron cauldron. Let's approach it. You hold the cauldron, which contains a portentous infusion. It's heavy. Um, I can look in the cauldron. It's quite full, and there's far more blood in there than slime. Supposedly, that's a good thing. Um, I can drink it. If there's enough blood in it, you'll ascend. Ah, uh, got some respect. You drink the blubbling, blubbling, blubbling what? You drink the bubbling concoction and belch an owl. Your body solidifies almost instantly. You are an elder now. I did it. Best monster ever. Here's how I'm doing. Um, not so good on the whatever the gifty thing is, but uh, everything else did, did pretty good. Wicked. You are now an elder. You are welcome in Znak, the oldest of the monster towns. There's more? <laughs> In this stage of life, if you pay, play your cards right, you'll be able to affect both the way monsters view humans, and vice versa. Use your powers of persuasion widely. Alright. We'll do one mission here. And then we'll wrap it up next week, because we're already ten minutes in, but oh man. Next time, we're real speed running it. We're going to be auctioneer level speed talking. What's going up with this? Bliss Tree proposes a new plan to keep an eye on the humans. What is it? We'll take over an abandoned house in Carmen, keep someone in there at all times, take extensive notes on everything that they do. Other elders seem to like the idea very much. They argue about where to establish their spy house. Carmen has many empty buildings. Um, I could ruin everything by suggesting somewhere humans will look bad. Suggest a place that will encourage understanding, or uh, put many eyes in many buildings. That's a waste of time. Let's try the cleverness option. The expedition sets out immediately. Hiding in the unused upper floor of the library, they observe the humans reading and learning. Okay. Oh, monsters be humans, plus 18. That's a stat. In short order, several elders learn to read for the first time. They seem impressed with their unsuspecting human subjects. Off to a good start in monster-human relations. This ambassador will be the last leg of my monster journey. Let me know what you think down below. Have yourselves a wonderful week. Awesome week. And I have yourselves a wonderful day on top of that. Bye.